So a lot of what you're doing in the chapters we're working on right now, chapter 5, chapter 6, chapter 7, you may have noticed that there's not a lot of application problems. And same thing with chapter 6. This is more skills that we're going to use as we move later in the course. There, we'll see one type of application at the very end, but a lot of it is just skills-based stuff. So chapter 6 has to do with factory. And the thing you have to remember about factoring is that it's basically the opposite of multiplying. So everybody knows how to multiply stuff, right? Well, there's the first example. 3 times 4. 3 times 4 we know is 12, right? So essentially what we have here, so when we go this direction, when we take 3 times 4 and we know that equals 12, that's a process we already know. That's multiplying, right? But when we go the opposite way, and you've done this with numbers, when you take 12 and you rewrite it as 3 times 4, times four that is called factoring. And you, where, where's somebody raise their hand? Where's some place you've heard of factoring before? And what kind of algebra? Is, where, where have we heard factoring for? Yeah. Yeah. Well, what did you use it for? What is it called? Least common factor, there's one. Okay, what else? Like prime, numbers. prime factorization, factoring with prime numbers. Yeah, so, so you've done it before. Like we use the factoring trees, you guys remember that? So, so the difference between this kind of factoring where you take 12 and you break it down, actually what you would have done before is you would have taken 12 and you would have said, okay, that's 3 times 4 and then that goes to 2 times 2. So 12 is equal to 2 squared times 3, remember that? What you would have done with that is with just numbers. You do that with numbers. Now we're going to do that same process, though, but we're going to do it with variables and algebraic expressions, the kind of stuff that we've been doing in Chapter 5. So right here, x squared plus 5x plus 6. The homework, which some of you may have started on today, some of you may have not, said that when you multiply this out, sometimes it's called FOIL, distributing, whatever you want. When you multiply this side out on the right side, you get that. Right? So, so we can do that off to the side. X plus 2, just a reminder, times X plus 3. If you multiply it, the first thing we do is we take X and we multiply it by the X and we multiply it by the 3. So X times X is? Uh-huh, and then X times 3 is 3 x and then what do we distribute we distribute the x first and then we distribute the two so two times x and two times three two times x is and two times three is and then what are we done combine like terms right the two middle terms are like terms three x plus two x is So that's what you see right here, right? x squared plus 5x plus 6. So again, that same idea is what we just talked about before. If I go from here to here, that's the process of multiplying. But if I go the other direction, if I go this way, what do we call that? Factoring. Factoring. It's the opposite of multiplying. And that's what chapter 6 is going to be about. It's going to be about taking an algebraic expression, something like x squared plus 5x plus 6, and writing it as something like x plus 2 times x plus 3. That's the whole idea. Any questions so far? Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll talk about a number of factoring techniques. The very first one... We're going to talk about those, how to factor out a greatest common factor. It's simplified as a GCF, greatest common factor. And so the very first thing we want to do is talk about what is the greatest common factor if we have, say, two terms here. And we have to consider both the number part and the variable part. So with greatest common factor, we're saying, what's the biggest number that can divide into 10 and 15? 
I heard 30, I heard 5, which is it? 5, because it's not what they go into, that would be the least common multiple, would be 30, but the greatest common factor is 5, because 5 is the biggest number, think about those words, greatest, so that means like biggest, common factors, so factors are numbers that multiply to get that number, so it means it's a number that divides into it. So my greatest common factor here for the number part is going to be 5 because 5 is the biggest number that can divide into 10 and 15. And then the x, how many x's? Anybody think they know? Raise a hand. Jason. Squared. squared. That's right, x squared. So for the common factor, you're actually looking for the smallest power of x. Because one of the key words in greatest common factor is that word right there, common. Kind of way to think about that is what do the two terms have in common? Well, the first term has two x's. The second term has four x's. How much do they have in common? Two. Just two. They only both have two. So we're going to be 5x squared. And just if you want to make a little bit of note about that, is that we're always look for the lowest power, lowest power. Okay, so any questions about that? Yeah, J was, Nathan. Uh, 10x, or 10x squared and 10x3, uh, or the third power, it'd still be 2, correct? Yeah. 10x squared plus 10x to the third. The GCF would be, in this case, 10, because 10 can go into both 10 and 10, but it would still be x squared. Yes. Other questions? So now what we want to do is we want to factor, well, actually, I guess not quite yet. We're going to do one more. I'm going to have you guys try one here. So look at, now we have three terms. We have 27, a to the fourth, b to the fifth, plus 18, blah, blah, blah. See if on your own, if you can write out the GCF for those three terms. What, so first look at the numbers separately. What's the, the biggest number that can divide into 27, 18, and 9? And then do the variable part after that. So go, go ahead and try to do that one on your own. And we'll talk about it here in a second. Okay, somebody think they know the answer to that one? Okay, how about Christina? What do we think? No. What should be different about it? I think nine is okay. I think nine is okay. Doesn't nine go into twenty-seven and eighteen and nine? Yeah. yeah. What about the a? Is a the lowest power of three, or three the lowest power of a? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What about b? Yeah. Anybody else get that? Yeah. yeah. I think that's good. Yeah. Now, now what what you said three a cubed b squared that's a greatest com that's a common factor, but it's not the greatest common factor. So we want to take the biggest number. Yeah. Okay. So 9 actually does divide into all of them. Any questions about that? Okay, and we're just going to keep building off this stuff. So now we know what the greatest common factor is. We're going to now factor the greatest common factor out of an expression. We'll talk about what that looks like. But So for the, for the next example, A, it says 
factor each polynomial by factoring out the greatest common factor. Can somebody new raise their hand and tell me what they think the greatest common factor is for example A? Somebody different. Miles. Five. There's no variable in this one because is there a variable in both terms? No, there's only a variable in the first term. So we can only do numbers. And 5 goes into 5 and it goes into 15. Everybody good with that? Okay. Now this process, when we factor out the GCF, this is the opposite of distributing. So we've practiced distributing. This is the opposite of that. I'll kind of explain that here in a second. So, you know, like if we had, say, 6 times x plus 3, we know if we were to distribute, we would take 6 times x is 6x, and 6 times 3 is 18, so it would look like that. That's how we distribute. So factoring out the GCF, we would look at this side over here and identify, okay, the greatest common factor is 6. I'm going to pull that out to the front. And what would have to be left inside the parentheses? You guys see that? So if I were to do that same sort of thing, for example, A, the GCF is 5, so I pull that out. X and the sign stays, so that would be a positive 3. Does that make sense? And how could we double check that to make sure we did it right? Just kind of distribute it right there in your head, right? So 5 times X is, and 5 times 3 is. Is that good? Yes, okay with that? Any questions? My battery's dying. We're having lots of battery issues today, huh? I got my cord here, though, so we're good. All right. Example B is a little bit tougher, not too bad. Let's write out the GCF first off to the side. Okay, I have another volunteer. Someone that hasn't volunteered yet today for what they think the GCF is for this one. Ernest. Five. Any X's on this one? x3, because we look at the lowest power. We have x to the fourth and x to the third, so we take x to the third, that's the lowest one. And then if we're factoring that out, remember, again, just like the last one, we put that in front of the parentheses. And you're kind of working backwards. So we're saying, this is the way I like to think about it. I know for this first spot right here, I need to multiply something there by the 5x cubed to get this. 5x. So, because to get 25, I need to take 5 times 5. And to get x to the fourth power, I need to take x to the third times an extra x. Brady. Um, what is it make of 5? You could do that as well. Okay. Yeah, you could, we're going to need to do that in some later examples. You don't have to do it in this case. Most of the time we don't pull out a negative unless we need to. Okay, but don't you need to pull a negative 35? No, because the sign will just come down. Okay. So if I bring that sign down, um, what would 5 need to multiply by to get 35? 7. seven. Does that still work? Is 5 times negative 7 negative 35? So the signs still work? Mm -hmm. And then are there any X's there? No. no, because we pulled all three of them out, so there doesn't need to be any inside there, right? Okay. Move that a little bit closer. Can you guys see what I use to make my videos now? This is my favorite little tablet here. Does anybody have any questions with this? Does this make sense? Yeah, but so is, is negative, would negative 5 cubed so, be right as well? So, so you could pull out negative 5 
x cubed and the only thing that would change is this would then have to be a negative 5x and this would be a positive 7. Yeah. We agree with that? So you could do that as well but most of the time we don't need to pull out the negative. We will in some cases. I want you guys to try C on your own. Go ahead and try C. In other words, so everybody agree that GCF is 2AB squared? We all right with that? So what's in the parentheses, there has to be three terms here. And some of you, and I always get this when I first do this, which is fine. If you did that, that's fine. There should be three terms here because when I distribute, remember this is the opposite of distributing. You should go one, Negative. two, three. You should have to do it three times to get these three terms back. So, so right here, there should be a one. Because 2ab squared times 1 is 2ab squared. Okay, can somebody raise their hand and tell me what the next part should be? Minus what? Nathan. 3 what? 3a. Okay, and somebody else for the last one? Hurry on. 4a squared. And what's the sign on that one? Positive. Good. Yes. So it has to be something that we multiply the GCF by to get this term. So 2 times 3 is 6. A times A is A squared. We need to have an A there to make up for the A missing there. And then we already pulled out all the B squared, so we don't need any Bs in there. What else? Other questions? Okay, let me... Now the last one is kind of a, a prep for the next type of factoring we're going to do. So I want to view this as kind of like three or two separate terms. That's a term and that's a term. Anybody think they know what we might consider the GCF for those two terms? What do they have in common? Area. It would be you combined x and y, and if a, b, would be in parentheses. Okay. Yeah, but what's the greatest common factor, though? I agree with that. That's the final answer. Miles. A, b. a plus b, right? So if you look at that, what, is, what does this term have in common with this term? They both have a plus b. So if we keep with that same idea of what we've been doing, what do we always do with the GCF? We put it on the front or the back? On the front. So take that GCF of A plus B, put it on the front, and then we have to figure out what goes in those two spots, right? So what does A plus B have to be multiplied by for the first one? X, right? And then for the second one, what's missing? Why? In other words, oh, my Y just disappeared. If I distribute, if I, if I think of this as one big chunk that's in parentheses, if I take that and distribute it times X, I get this. Yes? Mm -hmm. And if I take that chunk and I distribute it times Y, I get this. Questions about that one? Yeah. There's no numbers. Now we've got more variables, though. Yeah. Anybody have any questions about that? Because we build, we use this one to build the next type. It's factoring by grouping. So if you want to turn over to the next page, we'll talk about that factoring by grouping. So factoring by grouping should be used to factor a polynomial that has four terms. So anytime you see one with four terms, we go, oh, oh, factor by grouping. I know what to do with this one. There's four terms. And we should be better, especially after today's homework, of counting up terms. Terms are separated by pluses or minuses, and we have one, two, three, four terms in this first one. 
And all you really have to do is you have to do the GCF twice. I'll show you what I mean by that here in a second. We've just practiced the GCF. We're going to do this two times. And we're going to do it in groups of two. So lots of twos here. So if I, if I look here at the first group of two, and then treat the sep second group of two separately, What's the GCF for that first one? Well, 1 is the biggest number. What about the x's? x squared? Yeah? What about the next one? What's the GCF? 5? No, no x's? No X's, yeah. Okay. So, so what we're going to do there is we are going to take the X squared and we're going to factor it out of the first group. That's why we call it factoring by grouping. We're going to factor it out of the first group. So that means we pull it to the front and we got to figure out what goes in the parentheses. Pull to the front and figure out what goes in the parentheses. So someone new, who can tell me what goes in the parentheses for that one? We've been doing this. James? Uh, 1 minus 6. Close. X minus 6. Because that's an X to the third, so we need X squared times X to get X to the third. Okay. Yeah, the 3 is a little small. And then somebody else, what goes in the parentheses for the next one? Aaron? It would be 5 in the parentheses, x minus. Yes? Any questions about that one? Now compare that to the last example we did on the previous page. Can you see any similarities between that and the previous one? Doesn't it now kind of look like that last example started? Yeah. Everybody see that? So what should I do here? Distribute. Well, if you distribute, you're going to get back to what we started with. X squared times X is X cubed, and X squared times negative 6 is negative 6, six squared. We don't want to work back that way. Haley. We should pull out X minus 6. Yeah, so for these two terms, this term and this term, they both have X minus 6. Remember I said factor out the GCF twice. In this case, the GCF is now X minus 6. So pull that out. And what's left? The first term, if I pull out X minus 6, what's left? X squared. And in the second term, if I pull out X minus 6, what's left? plus 5. So that's it. It's x minus 6 times x squared plus 5. Fun, yeah? You guys are looking at me like, oh my goodness, what is this? Okay. Hang in there with me. Okay. So try the next one. You guys try the next one. Pull out the GCF of the first group. Pull out the GCF of the second group. And then try to do the next step. I'm going to walk around if anybody has any questions. So I think most of you are to this spot where you have this. Now, the common mistake I see is that people don't put a sign in here. There has to be a sign. Is it a positive 2 or a negative 2? Positive. It's a positive 2. There has to be a sign there. Because if there's not a sign there, 
Well, then you would be having, then it would already be a product, but it's not, it would be factored because it would be this times this times this times this, but this is not times all that stuff. This is added to two multiplied by both of those. So, so make sure you always have a sign in there. Whether it's a plus or a minus, you have to have a sign in there. And then just kind of the other thing I haven't really talked about, but we've kind of talked about, is that in all these problems, notice that what's in the parentheses should always be the same thing. Because you want to be able to, x minus 6, x minus 6, we pulled it to the front. 5x minus 3y, 5x minus 3y. So that can kind of be your check to make sure you're doing this right, is that those parts in the parentheses are the same. Twice. Same. So now that they're the same, pull that one to the front, and what's left? A plus 2. Is that always the case? It's going to always be the same? If you do it right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, if it's not the same, then that means you're doing something wrong. Got it. Yeah. So this, this equals 5x minus 3y, parentheses, a plus 2. And now it's factored form. Remember, factored form means take it from something, from an expression, and write it as something times something. And we have this something times this something. It's factor form. Something times something. Okay, now the next one gets a little bit trickier. It's not too bad. So, so let's do this one together. What's the GCF here? Yeah, for the first group, there's no number that goes into 1 and 9 other than 1. But if you look at the variables, the lowest power on x is 2. So this is got to be x, what? Yeah, you all right with that? So now keeping with that idea that the part for the second part, what does the part have to be in parentheses over here? x minus 9. Because it's got to be the same. So what number has to be in front here? Plus one. Plus one. Because positive one times x is x, and positive one times negative nine is negative nine. Good? So now the parentheses are the same, so this has got to be equal to x minus nine times x squared plus 1. Now one more, I, I don't have this in the notes, but what if we had something like this? What if we had very similar to this last one? I'm going to make it kind of the same. Minus 9x squared. And then what if I had minus 2x plus 18? Okay, so this is, again, how many terms? Four terms, so we factor by grouping. Anytime it's four terms, we factor by grouping. Is there going to be any, any change to the first group? Or is that going to still be the same for the first group? Still the GCF is x squared. We factor it out and we get x minus 9. Everybody all right with that? So the second group, we also need it to be x minus 9. So what do we have to pull out there? Careful. It's got to be a negative to make the signs turn out right. Because negative 2 times positive x is negative 2x. But negative 2 times negative 9 gives us that positive 18. So you got to... And notice, you always have to pull out a negative whenever the signs are different. So this one went positive, negative. This one went negative, positive. So we need to switch the signs. And the way you do that is by pulling out a negative. So then the final answer on this one is going to be x minus 9 times... Yeah. x squared minus 2. Now... What if I would have wrote the answer this way? Is that okay? 
Okay, let me ask you this. Is that the same as Right? Multiply, it doesn't matter what order you multiply in, does it? No. Isn't that the same as this? No. This times this versus the opposite order? It's still the same thing, right? Just kind of throw that out there. It doesn't matter what order you put those with multiplication. Trick question. Okay. All right. So that's 6.1. Any questions about that one? We got factoring out of GCF and factoring by grouping. Take a deep breath. Okay. 6.2. Now we're going to start factoring trinomials. Trinomials mean there's how many terms? Three, Three terms. So, and we use some of this terminology in the homework you guys just worked on. You know, we talked about leading coefficient. So that's the number in front of which term? Right here, leading coefficient. Well, it's the number in front of which term? The first, second, or third term? Mm -hmm. The first term. So, we're going to be factoring trinomials that have this form, where the first term is x squared, the second term is bx, and the third term is just a number without the x. So, so b is a number and c is a number, x is the variable. So when I say leading coefficient of 1, that's like there's a 1 out here in front. Okay. What we're going to talk about in a little, in, in a few chapters is we call this a quadratic. Whenever there's squared in it, so far, we've just done linear, right? X to just a single X. We've never had X squared in equations. When you start to get X squareds in equations, then that becomes quadratic. And we'll do lots of applications with those. But for right now, all we're going to do is factor because factoring is a tool that we can use when working with quadratics. And we'll talk about why we use it later in the chapter. For now, we're just learning the skill. So, remember... We just talked about this at the beginning of the last section. Factoring is the opposite of multiplying. So the idea with factoring is to take this trinomial and write it as something times something. That would be called factoring. Okay? And we've practiced going this way, the distributing. So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put in the answer here, and then we're going to talk about why the answer is what it is in a second. So there's the answer. If you factor x squared plus 5x plus 6, it factors to x plus 2 times x plus 3. Yes, Ari. So to I... That's going to be the idea, yeah. So, what Ariane said is, you're looking, so this this 2 and this 3, those two numbers, if you add them together, what do you get? 2 plus 3? 5. See that number right there, 5? 2 plus 3 is 5. And then what's 2 times 3? 6. There's the 6. So the reason why we're adding to get 5 and multiplying to get 6, though, is very simple. It has to do with what happens when you distribute this out. So kind of off to the side here, if I rewrite this, let's rewrite it, and let's do the opposite. Let's actually multiply it. So when I multiply it, the first thing I do is I take x times what? x times x. So x times x is x squared. Stop me if you're stuck. Does that make sense? Okay, yes. and then what do I do? I take, so I first take x times x, then I take x times 3, which is what? 3x. And then what do I distribute? First I distribute the x, then I distribute the 
2. 2 times x is 2x. And 2 times 3 is 6. You okay with that? Okay. And then I could combine like terms. So the two middle terms, 3x and 2x, add up to 5x. Now, now check this out. How did I get these different parts? Well, this x part, this x squared part, excuse me, came from multiplying x times x. But I need to think in these shoes over here on this side. So when I'm trying to fill in these first two blanks, I'm trying to think of what two numbers multiply there, x and x, to get x squared. We've got to think backwards here. And so, so the first two spots, x times x, have to multiply to give x squared. And then these other two spots, the 2 and the 3, have to multiply to give 6. Because we got the 6 over here. That came from multiplying um, 2 times 3. And then um, Ariad said the 5, we had to add to give 5. Well, why did we add to give 5? Because we combined these two like terms, right? 3x added to 2x gave us 5x. And so that's what we're looking for with these. We're looking for numbers that multiply to 6 and add to 5. So we'll do some more examples here, but that's just kind of an introductory example. Any questions about that one? Yes? Yeah, well, we're always going to have it in that order. It'll be x squared plus something. It's this order up here. x squared plus bx plus c. So really... If you keep those, that kind of that form, it's numbers that are adding to get that B and multiplying to get that C. Okay. okay. Other questions? Brady. Is there any um, way really to go about getting a number where you don't just have to guess and just keep guessing? Well, well, I'm going to show you some kind of organized ways of doing it. Yeah. So, and I'm going to, this whole section right here. I'm going to kind of skip this. We'll come back to this later. So just kind of ignore that for now. And I have this big font size here. Always try to do what first? Factor out the GCF first, which we know how to do now, right? So if you always try to factor out the GCF first, a lot of times it makes your factoring a whole lot simpler. So if I look at this first one, is there a GCF between those three terms? Is there an X in every term? No. no. Is there a number that goes into 1, 13, and 36? One. Yeah, 1, but does it do any good to factor out 1? No. no. So, so here there's no GCF. I don't have to worry about that. But I always want to ask myself, can I do it? Now, remember... We're trying to multiply to give 13 or multiplying to give 36? Multiply to 36. So what I like to do here, and as you get better at this, you just kind of start doing it in your head. But at the beginning, I think it's a good idea to start, start with what are the things that multiply to give 36. So we have 1 times 36. We have 2 times 18. We have 3 times 12. 4 times 9. 5, can we multiply 5 by something? Mm -hmm. No, but 6 times 6. So those are the different options. Are there any other ones? 12 and 3, but I already wrote that one just in a different order. So they have to multiply to give 36, but add to give 13. Which of these combinations add up to 13? That one, right? 4 plus 9 equals... 13. Yeah? 
So that's kind of the puzzle there. So now, if I go back and I try to write the factored form, remember the first two spots have to multiply to give x squared. So that's got to be x and x, because x times x is x squared. The second two spots have to multiply, though, to give 36. And which ones did we say we were going to pick? 4 and 9. And to get a positive 13, these both have to be positive. So that's it. That's how we go about it. Any questions about that? Well, we'll do one with GCF here. It doesn't really add much more when we do a GCF. Any other questions about that first one? Some of you may have done this before. You may remember doing it from high school or different class, but sure. It would, just, it would just say factor. Factor. Yep. Yep. Or it might say factor completely. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, what about B? This one's actually a little bit easier, I think. Because which, is it 14 or 13 we're trying to multiply to get? 13. How many different ways are there to get 13? Just 1 and 13, right? So that's got to be our only choices. So this is going to look x, x, and then we have to choose 1 and 13. But now they need to add to negative 14. And I always like to wait to do the signs later. So if they're both positive, if that's positive 1 and positive 13, they're going to add to give positive 14. If I want negative 14, what kind of signs do I need? Negative 14. They're both negative, aren't they? Negative 1 added to negative 13 makes negative 14. That's the answer. And again, how can you always check your answer? Yeah, we'll distribute it all out, right? If I take x times x, I get x squared. If I take x times negative 13, I get negative 13x. If I take negative 1 times x, I get negative 1x. If I take negative 1 times negative 13, I get positive 13. Does that give me back that? Yeah? Am I losing you? Does this make sense? Yeah? Okay. All right. You think you can try one on your own here? Go ahead and try C. X squared minus X minus 56. Minus X minus 56. So start, start out with what numbers can multiply to get 56. Yep, it's got to be that way. It's got to be x and x. Always start with x and x. And we know it's going to be 8 and 7, but this one has to be negative. This one has to be positive because this is a negative 1 right here, right? That 1's not written down, but it is negative. Perla. Question, it doesn't matter. Like, I did x plus 7 and x minus 8 doesn't matter? No, I kind of asked that question earlier, right? Yeah. Is that answer okay? Yeah, it's just like saying is 2 times 3 the same as 3 times 2. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Is this making sense? We can do this? Yeah? We're going to do... You love math, yes. I'm glad you said so. I do too. I'm kind of partial to it. I don't get a chance to do it enough though. Well, maybe I lied.
you guys think this is fun, you should drop into my Math 70 class, Calculus 3, on Tuesday on the, in the morning. We're at 10 o'clock if you want to come. You think we have a lot of variables here? Okay. So one question I haven't asked for a while is, have, do we need to factor out a GCF? Those last examples, were there any GCFs? What about D? Yes. yes, we do. What's the GCF? 3x, yeah, because no, notice now there's also an x in every term. So the GCF is 3x, and we know when we have a GCF, we pull it out to the front. So who can raise their hand and tell me what goes in the parentheses? Somebody hasn't volunteered yet today. I think we can all do this now. Rosemary? One, yeah, I'm not going to write the one, but yeah. One x to the what? x squared, uh huh. Plus six, six x, good. And plus what? Do we have an x on that one though? If there's an x, then that would be x times x would give us x squared, but we only have one x. So yeah, but that's that's we all right with that? But, I mean that's just something we did last section, so that's not a new thing. It's just we're adding that to the new stuff. So what do you think we're going to do now? Because. Because what are we we're, in this section? We're doing things that that have this form x squared x number. And look how this one started off. It started off at x cubed x squared x. That's not the form we know, right? But if I pull out the GCF, all of a sudden we're back to that nice form, right? So can you take it from there? What is, what is this part factor to? What, what goes here and here? What goes first? X and X? What do we multiply to get 5? 1 times... Any other ways to multiply to get 5? Not last time I checked. All right. So one and five. Now this is something we haven't really talked about yet. We kind of talked about it, but this last number, the thirteen or the five or the or the thirty-six, those numbers are either going to be positive or negative. So that last number, it's either going to be positive or negative. To get a positive, we either have to multiply a positive times a positive or a negative times a negative to get a positive, right? And to get a negative, we need to multiply a positive times a negative. So just keep that in mind as you're doing these. So like I look at this one, that last one is a positive 5, so that means this has to either be positive and positive or negative and negative, but this adds up to a positive, so these both have to be positive, yeah? Is 1, is positive 1 added to positive 5, positive 6? Absolutely. Now what do I do with this 3x in the front? <laughs> what do I do with it? Any ideas? Just bring it down. Yeah, it stays with it. Because let's think about it. If we just if we make that factoring is the opposite of multiplying. If I were to multiply this all out and I left that three x off, would we get what we started with? No, the three x is part of it. 
So that's as far as we can go. There we go. Questions? Yes. Since we have three terms, can we not get the GPS and get the same answer? You could, but it's a little bit more complicated. We're going to deal with that in the next section. We're not quite ready to. What? We don't have to. <laughs> You know, so it always makes it easier to pull out the GCF if you can. Yeah, good question. What else? So what's a little different about example E? Two variables. Uh oh. Oh. What do we do with that? Skip. <laughs> Skip it. Okay. Well. I mean, we, sh we should be able to do what goes in the first part. What goes here and here? What, what do we multiply to give x squared? x and x, right? x times x is x squared. And normally, we're used to this just being a 6, not a 6y squared. Now, let's pretend the y squared wasn't there, and we just had 6. What would we multiply to give 6? 3 and 2, or 1 and 6, or 6 and 1, yeah? Which of those give us negative 5? Or can they both give us negative 5? That's a little tricky. Because so, so they have to add up to give negative five. So well, if both of these are negative, isn't negative two minus three? Isn't that negative five? Isn't that also negative five? That's right. So that's the that's the check. It needs to add to give negative five, but multiply to give positive 6. Now remember to get a positive, either both have to be positive or both have to be negative. And so if they both have to be positive or negative, which one of these do I have to throw out? The bottom one. Everybody see why that doesn't work? Yes. It has to be those two because a negative plus a negative is a negative, and a negative times a negative is a positive. So it's got to be minus, is that my pen that fell off? Oh, it still works. That would be terrible if I couldn't make videos anymore. Oh, you're in luck. Yeah. Yeah, so the only thing that's missing is the Y, right? Because negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6, but it's not positive 6y squared. So we need to add a y and a y. It's kind of the same idea. It's just we didn't need to skip that one, did we, Nathan? It wasn't that bad. Any questions? So... You guys try F. Yes? Questions about that one? That's the only way you can do it. It has to be a positive and a negative because it has to multiply to give a negative and add also to give a negative. Okay, that's kind of an overview of those kind. Now we have some special case ones on the next page. So go ahead and turn over the page, please. And we have what's called these 
um, perfect square trinomials. Which, which have the form that the first number, so look at the form here. I'll highlight it, the form. Notice that the first term and the last term are something squared. A squared and B squared. Same thing as over here. It's A squared and B squared. So look at this first example. The first term is X squared. What's the second one? It's 7 squared, right? 7 times 7 is 49, or 7 squared is 49. So it has, it actually it has this form, the second one, because the middle term is negative. Middle term is negative 14. So, so what it factors to is it factors to, it's kind of, it's the same idea. It's still x and x, but when it's a 49 like that, so this has got to be 7 and 7. And to make it add up to negative 14, what do the signs on these have to be? They both have to be negative. Negative 7 plus negative 7 is negative 14. And is a negative times a negative a positive 49? Yes. Yeah. Now, the reason why this is a special case is what do you notice about both of these binomials? They're the same. So we could actually rewrite it like that. So notice the example up here. See how it has that example? If it has this form, it factors to a minus b squared. That's why. So if you remembered that, Notice, notice the form here. If you notice that the last and the first term are both squares, then the, and the middle term is twice the product of the first and the second. So like this is x and this is 7. x times 7 is 7x. Seven What's twice 7x? 14x. Look at this. This is x. This is 5. 5 squared is 25 x times 5 is 5x, what's twice 5x? 10x. So it has that form. So, so if you remember the shortcut, you could just jump here and say, oh, well this has got to be x plus 5 squared. But if you don't remember the shortcut, you can always do what we've been doing, say, okay, well this has got to be x and x, and then to get 25, that's got to be 5 and 5, and both of them have to be Positive? But then that just goes up to that, right? Okay? So the answer really here is this. This is the simplified answer, and then that's the simplified answer. Any questions about those ones? Those are called perfect square trinomials. Got a little bit more here. Hang in here with me. A bit more. Okay, the other kind of special case is what's called a difference of squares. And these only have two terms. <laughs> and notice the first term and the second term are both, again, they're both squares. So it's something squared minus something squared. And when that happens, it factors to a plus it times a minus it. So, when I'm factoring, what's the first thing I should always try to do? Greatest common factor. Does this have a greatest common factor? 2x squared, yes. Which leaves x squared minus 9. You pull out the GCF, this is this is the GCF right here.
Always ask yourself that first. Can I pull out the greatest common factor? If you can, pull it out. It makes things simpler. Now look at the form of what's left, left in the parentheses and see how that matches up with that form. See the similarities? Something squared minus something squared. Nine is what squared? Three squared. So if you follow this format here, what that means is since 9 is 3 squared, that means you can write this as x plus 3 times x minus 3. x plus 3 times x minus 3. And what happens with the 2x squared, the GCF in the front? Just comes down with it. And then there's one more in this section. Look at the last one at the bottom of the page. Actually, I guess there's two more. What if a trinomial is not factorable? So if I have if I have this one right here, we need to find numbers that multiply to give what? One times seventy, two times thirty five, three, four, five times fourteen. 7 times 7. Any of those work? First glance, you might think 7 and 10 because can 7 and 10 add up to 3? Well, it would have to be that, right? Is there a problem though? Yeah. So negative 10 and 7 add to give negative 3, but what's negative 10 times 7? Negative 70, it needs to be a positive 70. So that's the closest, this is the closest one to working, but does it work? What about the other ones? No. So what do we call a trinomial if it's not factorable. What what do we call a number that's not factorable? Like six is factorable is two times three. It's prime. Yeah, so this guy right here, this is prime. Just like that number there is prime. Um, yeah, you can't you can't factor it. Yeah, so it's just prime. Right yeah, I know it breaks your heart. But. <laughs> okay. So is the look at the last one x squared plus nine is that factorable? X squared plus nine. We did x squared minus nine. Does that work? No. The two middle terms would cancel, but 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Does that work? No, yeah, because then it adds up to 6x, right? So is this one factorable? That one's not factorable either, so we call this one also... Time. And this is different than this guy. Remember, this guy up here is a s difference of squares. This is called a sum of squares. And sum of squares, those are, those are always prime. 
always prime. Okay, so that's that's a quick introduction to factoring. Now, I have a few more minutes. I want to show you one or two examples from the next section where they get a little bit harder, and then we're going to take our quiz. Because I want to give you as much time as possible next class to practice these. So, so the next section, 6.3, is now what happens... What happens when this first term, the squared term, doesn't have a 1 anymore? What happens if A is not equal to 1, but it's some other number? Because then things get a little bit trickier. They get a little bit trickier. So, because all of a sudden, you can't just take... Can I just take... A times A here? Is A times A equal to 2A squared? No. No, one of them needs to be a 2A. And then you might think, okay, well, 6. 6 is 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. You don't have to write this down because this is wrong. Which one of those can add up to 7? 6 and 1 can, right? So what if I did plus 1 and plus 6 and then let me distribute this real quick so 2a times a is 2a squared 2a times 6 is 12a 1 times a is 1a and 1 times 6 is so this is 2a squared plus 13a plus 6 See, the, the thing that throws the wrench in there is this 2, because when you distribute the 2, it doesn't make it a 6a, it makes it a 12a. If this was a 6a right here, they'd be good. 6a plus 1a is... You guys see how the 2 can cause a problem? So I have a method that I use here, and basically what the method does is it allows me to quickly check this multiplication. And then it's kind of like filling in the puzzle to see which numbers make it work out. So, so this is the way it works out. And this is what I call the tables. We kind of skipped over them earlier. So let me just introduce the tables to you real quick. I'm going to erase all this because this is all wrong. And here's the way the table works. Uh, I never used to call it this. But my students started calling it tic-tac-toe, and you'll see why here in a second. Here's my table. Anybody ever play tic-tac-toe? Or, or are you guys too young to play tic-tac-toe? Yeah, you know, we do everything on computers now. There's no tic-tac-toe. You know tic-tac-toe, yeah? Three in a row? That's the board, right? Okay. So here's the way it works. And actually, let me move it down a little bit so I have more space here. So, there's my tic-tac-toe. This, this first column, the first column, we have to multiply to get A. I'll talk about what that means in a second. The second column, we need to multiply to get C. And then the third column, we have to add to get B. Now, if you think about it, we're doing this, we've been doing this all the time anyway. Because when I, when I do something like this, x, x squared plus um, 6x plus 8, x times x multiplies to give a. 2, 2 times 4 multiplies to give 
is C. Remember, this is AX squared plus BX plus C. So this times this multiplies to give A. This times this multiplies to give C. And then these two add to give B. So that's all this table does, but it just kind of organizes it real quick and you kind of learn the pattern and you don't have to write all that stuff out. So this is the way it works. For the first problem, for the first problem, let's draw our tic-tac-toe. What's A? Well, it's 2A squared, right? So what, what do we have to multiply to give 2A squared? A times 2A. That's really the only option, right? So that's... Okay, now... So the first column is multiply to give A. The second column is multiply to give C. What is, what is C? 6. Well, what can I use to get 6? 3 and 2 or 6 and 1. Now, it's generally a good rule of thumb to start with the ones that are closer together. So let's try 2 and 3 first. 2 times 3, multiply to give 6. A times 2A, multiply to give 2A squared. Everybody with me? And then over here, the last column, the last column adds to give... B, right? Multiply to get C, multiply to get A, add to get B. And so I'm going to write B over here. What is B? 7A. So these two have to multiply to get that. But now the way we get these two numbers is by cross multiplying. So you take a cross. I take this times this, and I take this times this. And I put the answer here, and I put the answer here. You don't have to write these arrows out every time because you'll get used to the pattern. But if I cross multiply, is everybody looking? If I take 2a times 6, cross multiply, 2a times 6 is 6a. I'm sorry, 2a times 3. Uh, I was thinking ahead. 2a times 3 is 6a. And then cross multiply the other way. a times 2. Houston, we have a problem. The 6a and 2a add to give 7. No. So that way we tried, did it work? No. So, so here's what you do. You don't erase the table. You make another tic-tac-toe. Make another tic-tac-toe. Leave the first column the same. Leave it A and 2A. And now let's switch the order for the second column. Instead of 3 and 2, let's write 2 and 3. Because 2 and 3 still multiply to give 6. It doesn't matter which order, right? So everybody see, all I did, all I did, I kept this the same. But I switched the order of these. Instead of that way, I did it that way. And all that's going to do is it's going to change the way we multiply. So maybe that's a different combination that can give us 7a. So if I take 2a times 2, I get 4. And if I take a times 3, I get 3a. Does that add up to 7a? Yeah. So it's... Once people get the hang of this, I mean, it's kind of a weird thing. But once people get the hang of it, they kind of like it. Because it's like a puzzle. You just got to figure out the puzzle, the way the numbers work. And you may, in a previous class, have learned a different way to do this. And if you remember that, that's fine. This is just the way I've found is best for students. So that does add up to 7a, yes? yes? Now, this is the last part of it, is that you have to look at the signs to make this work, because that's going to give our sign on our final answer. So this is a positive 7a. To have positive, what needs to be the sign on both of these? They both need to be positive. So physically, write in that positive. You've got to write it in. And then if both of those are positive, that means that this had to be a positive 2. 
and this had to be a positive 3 because remember where those came from is it came from cross multiplying. So this had to be a plus 3, or a times 3 is 3a, and 2a times positive 2 is 4a. And then our answer is right here at the table. This is our answer. Our answer is a plus 2 times 2a plus 3. The answer is right there. I'm going to do one more before we leave, and I think we're going to skip the quiz today. I know that will break your heart. But I want to, see you, I want to have you see one more of these. So that's our answer right here. We don't want to leave it in the table though, so I'm going to take that answer and write it up here. It looks like a plus 2 times 2a plus 3. And again, could I write it in the reverse order? Could I write 2a plus 3 times a plus 2? Yes. Yeah, same answer. Bless you, by the way. I didn't. So I know, kind of weird, but we're going to get lots of practice with this, and you'll get better at it. Okay, is it all right if we do one more and then take off? Okay. Um, so the next one, what do, we always, what do we always try to do first? Before that. Greatest common factor. Is there a greatest common factor here? Pull the 5 out. 6y squared plus 1. y minus 1. Make your table. Now, since I pulled the 5 out, do I have to worry about 5? No. no. So this is my A now. That's my new A. It's not 30 anymore. It's, it's 6. This is my new B. That's 1Y. And my new C is negative 1. So if I fill those in, remember it goes A, C, B. A, C, B. I know it's not alphabetical order but and then we're we're following this pattern we multiply to give a so what can I multiply to give 6y squared one and six or three and two and remember I said let's pick ones that are closer together, not the 1 and 6, but the 2 and 3. It may be that we need 1 and 6, but don't do that first. And since it's y squared, it needs to be a 2y and a 3y. Now, we don't have a whole lot of options here for 1. What do we multiply to get 1? Remember, it is multiply. Multiply to get c. So it's got to be 1 and 1. We're, we're going to do the signs later. Don't do the signs yet. Remember, the signs come later. One of them will have to be a negative. Now we cross multiply. Remember, to get these numbers here, we cross multiply. So we take 3y times 1, 3y. And then we cross multiply the other way. 2y times 1 is 2y. And now we want those, remember, we want those to add to give 1y. So what do we, which one needs to be negative? Two. 2 needs to be negative. Write the sign in. And this one needs to be positive. Write the sign in. And what do we do with those signs? Carry them over to the middle. So that sign comes over here. If that's a positive, this has got to be a positive. If that's a negative, this has got to be a negative. So that's my answer. It's this times that. So that's what goes over here. 5 comes down. Then the first one is 2y plus 1. Second one is 3y minus 1. I don't expect you guys to be really good at these yet because we've only done two. 
But I think before next class, if you, this is what I would recommend doing as homework. I mean, we're going to have three hours plus in class next time. I'm going to show you some more examples at the start of class. If you didn't finish up 5.4, finish up 5.4, and then maybe, maybe do the 6.1. If you're feeling really good, do the 6.2 at home. 6.3 is this stuff, and I think we need to do a little bit more talking in class. But So maybe work on those at home, and then if you need to finish 5.4, definitely do 6.1 at home. I think you can do that. I will open them up so you can start doing them right now. Ashley, you had a question? Is there no